After four long years, we have finally received the Acolyte trailer from on high. And boy, oh boy, was it worth the wait. Interesting new characters, spaceships, kung fu fighting that's 100% canonical with all the other movies. This guy. We have been absolutely starved for Star Wars content over the past few years, and so it truly left me spasming in delight at the prospect of setting my eyes on the latest product cooked up by the geniuses at Disney Star Wars. Now some Debbie Downers out there might say that this show looks like an unoriginal, woke pandering, mind-numbingly bland and overt cash grab meant to milk whatever remnants are left from the teats of a dead cow that is Star Wars. Not me, though. Hearing the zap of those lightsabers is the only thing it takes to get me on board. It comes hot off the heels of modern masterpieces like The Book of Boba Fett and Ahsoka, and who could forget the third season of The Mandalorian that brought us that completely necessary and long-awaited Jack Black and Lizzo cameo. I watch that episode daily, and it fills me with so much... Pride and joy to see my two heroes finally integrated with my favorite franchise. Suffice it to say, my expectations are high for this show, especially after they strayed with Andor. I mean, honestly, that show was so confusing. This is a franchise about space wizards intended for children. You don't need to intellectualize it with egghead dialogue or a unique story. I just want a repackaged version of what I had last time. But I guess they can't all be winners. Now, we do have to address the backlash that the Acolyte has received. Some homophobic bigots have made hurtful comments that this show is only meant to shove LGBTQ propaganda down the gullets of children. An absurd and groundless claim based only on what the director has publicly said. Um, when I saw Frozen as a, as a grown-ass woman, I, um, I cried through the entire movie. Uh, there was just something about... The relationship between the sisters, the the like de villainization of uh, the classic kind of fairy tale bad bad guy, you know, um, uh, the concept of true love being between two sisters and not a heterosexual relationship, like it just mm -hmm. it just destroyed me completely, and I thought. Gosh, you know, I would love to make something like this that is, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, Disney, meaning it's something that, like, my parents would have allowed me to see when I was younger as a queer person. Gotcha. But I would have been able to understand as a queer person, and I think I, I would have had a completely different life. Now, what these bigots don't understand is that this show is not about secretly encrypting children's entertainment with subliminal sexual undertones to pump them full of radical ideologies. It's so much more than that. I believe that the Acolyte could actually be the savior of Star Wars. Savior from what, you might ask? You. The fans. And it's all thanks to one person. Leslie Headland! Talk about an entrance! That was a catwalk. That was fashion show worthy. Yeah, I just try to treat everything as if we're on RuPaul's Drag Race. That's kind of like my... Just, just work the runway, work the runway. You, you worked that runway? And I've asked your cast about it, and they all have a sneaking suspicion that some of that fan fiction may have inspired the Acolyte, or at least <laughs> snuck its way into those pages. Here's what I'll say. The fan fiction that I wrote was many, many years ago, pre-internet, so it's not quite <laughs> what the kids are doing now. But I will say I was always interested in female protagonists that were leaning toward the dark side of the force and, and, and being um, interested in that. I think because when I was little and I heard Ben Kenobi say uh, Vader was seduced by the dark side. Vader was seduced by the dark side of the force. There was just something about that that like made my adolescent <laughs> like, like I was just like, why did he use that word seduce? Like, why did that happen? You know, so I think that that possibly some of that ended up in the show as well. If she had an idea for a gay-coded Star Wars fan fiction, we as fans should not deny her the right to make it canon. We need to stop being so selfish. This show is not for us. This is a show made by Leslie Headland for Leslie Headland, and we should be happy for her. The Star Wars of the 70s and 80s is gone, and in its place we have this newer, better, gayer franchise, and we should celebrate that. 
Now, in all seriousness, this show looks like an absolute garbage fest, and everybody knows it. The YouTube like-to-dislike ratio can stand as a testament to that fact. I think, what is it up to now? Half a million dislikes? Yeah. But I do honestly believe the Acolyte could be the savior of Star Wars in a very real way. I'm an optimist, and I believe that day will come when a woke Star Wars show will come about that is so catastrophically pathetic that everyone of every race, gender, and creed will be united in hatred against it. A show so unimaginably repugnant that anyone who watches it will involuntarily projectile vomit from the sheer atrocity. This will force Disney to become a barf bag company, as it would be much more profitable for them than to continue to produce content of this depressing quality, thus saving both us, the fans, from ever witnessing such things ever again, as well as the dwindling barf bag industry. And in that regard, I believe the Acolyte shows great promise. And I want you to get out of this office right now. I don't want you here. Out. Dad, I got your voucher. Out! I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry. We'll have him, like, burned and... Well, I don't even know burned. who that guy is.